So we've really been in it for the last week, haven't we? We sure have. One of the things that a lot of people come to us with, and we've noticed over time, is this. There's a theme of questions we get asked around how do you keep your dynamic, your dumb sub dynamic so consistent over, you know, five and a half years for us now, because a lot of people seem to struggle with consistency and staying connected to this part of their relationship. And this came up for us as a topic to talk about today, really because we had quite the week of getting knocked on our ass with both getting sick for the second time in a month. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> and it's, it's so bizarre for us because we, we take good care of ourselves intentionally. We put a lot of effort into it and are generally very healthy people. And then all of a sudden, it's just been like, we can't catch a break. Yeah, I'm still seeking to understand that one. <laughs> and for anyone listening to this or watching this, you probably still hear it in our voices because we're not all the way back to 100% yet. I think both of us are kind of maybe more, closer to 100% mentally, but our bodies are still catching up. I'm still not there mentally. Well, this will be interesting. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but. It's day nine for me of this. Yeah, it's seven for me and nine for you in a row of fighting this thing off. I would say I'm a good 85% of the way there. So, still, in light of all of this, and this being the second time we've been through being pretty seriously ill in the last month, there's never really any th threat to us falling out of our dumb sub dynamic. Not at all. And that consistency for us is a big part of why it works, but also the reason that the dumb sub dynamic works so well for us is because of that consistency and our commitment to it. And I guess the place to start with this is what I want to know from your side, what does consistency in this look like or feel like to you when we're both sick and really not showing up in maybe the fullness of how we would want to? Well, I trust and believe in our love and devotion of each other and the foundation that the dom sub dynamic has brought to our relationship. But I can't separate that from who I truly feel like I've become because of this, because that doesn't go away, even when I'm not feeling well. Like, I didn't, I don't lose anything of that. And so there's no fear of it. There's just this longing to feel the experience of a daily life with a, what I'm just going to call a healthy body. And I would say, I don't want to focus on the struggles but I want to be real about this aspect of it because this ties into where we used to be is when I'm feeling so ill that I don't even want to cuddle and touch you. What? What that did to me mentally was just so challenging. And I just found myself longing to just experience life with you again in that way. 
And so I can understand where this question comes from because we used to be at the place where connection felt like it was there and it was gone. Mm -hmm. But I also know the difference in life experience I get to have on a daily basis, which is quote unquote normal now. After doing so much of what I'm just going to call the emotional healing work. You know, consistency in this dynamic for me, when we aren't feeling our best, really is based on the trust that I have in you and the trust that I have in myself. I don't, I don't ever reach a point where I'm worried that we're going to lose this. No. Even when, like this week, days and days and days go by where you aren't showing up for me in any way that is even relatively connected to what our dumb sub dynamic normally looks like. And I'm not showing up for you in any way, even remotely close to the level of responsibility and leadership that you've come to count on me for. So for me, we are still very much in our dumb sub relationship, even when we're not showing up as dominant and submissive. Yeah, I, the word that comes to me is perspective. What is the perspective on what this looks like and what this means in all of life and not getting held up on it's only dom sub when it's going well. And, and, and I put quote unquote well, you know. It comes back to something we've talked about a lot on this podcast and other places before, which is, are we being this or are we doing this? Yeah, that's a very important distinction. And you, you can't lose connection to something that's true. If it's real and if it's right, it, you can't lose it. It's either the truth or it's not. Absolutely. And so the only way to lose the like, consistency or connection in this kind of dynamic is if you're trying to do something that you haven't fully integrated into your being and who you are. And that's why I think people may have a tendency to f fall out of their dom sub dynamic. Yeah, be because I can also see if a relationship is based in the foundational aspects of what each other is doing in more of that performative way. I mean, let's talk about this. You know, we've kind of both been up and down this week. Like mm. all of a sudden I would have a little bit of energy and then you would have a little bit of energy. And so the daily tasks that you did, sometimes I did. Like yeah. I was the one who did the bread process one night because you weren't feeling as well. I would do the coffee mm -hmm. <laughs> in the evening. and and do some of the cooking and then you did some of the cooking. And so these, the doing performative tasks were kind of like this ebb and flow. And to me, that never felt um, like a burden either because it became this way that I got to serve you in a way that I don't normally get to do. And so it despite how I felt, it felt extremely good to feel like I got to take care of you and not in the mothering way, 
in a loving, devoted way of, re of experiencing you in your humanness, where you're at. Like, I don't know. It, I can say this now <laughs> because there were moments where I, like, I don't feel like a negative person, but there were very dark moments for me this week where I just felt like I wanted to crawl in a hole. <laughs> but then there were moments where I got to be this service to you that you more so serve me in certain ways, you know? And so it did feel like a beautiful, um, some beautiful aspects in the chaos of what the week was. Well, and that comes back to the trust that I have in you. And I'd love to hear you reflect on your side of this too, but the trust that I have in you is that for one, when you are stepping in and doing, taking care of some of the things that I normally take care of, completing some of the, the day-to-day -day responsibilities that I normally take on that you don't have to think about, that you don't have to make decisions about, that you don't have to figure out, that are just things that I take care of. I have a trust in you now that you aren't going to get lost in your head or get lost to the perfection of doing or grab on to these things like because I couldn't do them once or twice that now you were going to need to like jump in and do like get your fingers back into trying to control these things. I didn't always have that trust. No, you didn't. And so it gets easier for me to relax and give my, have some patience with myself, even though I had my dark moments this week too, where I was very impatient with myself and I like, that impatience felt a, like a lot of anger for just being so completely incapacitated for days on end. Um, but just having that trust that when we have to ebb and flow in and out of the ways we normally show up, that this is a detour from how I have tried to establish this relationship for us so that it suits both of our best selves. And that by taking that detour, we're, we're not getting off of the path. There's just a knowing that you are going to settle in right back at my feet. As soon as I'm ready to step back up and take the helm of the ship again. So what does that trust feel like for you on your, on your side? Because I know that I haven't always earned the trust that I was going to show up and take responsibility in maybe the way that I at least hope that I do now. I truly believe that life happens for us. And that was something that we kept focusing on this week. Everything happens for us. And life always works out. And I never once wavered in fearing that we wouldn't, for lack of a better way to say it, get back to the normal feel that we experience on a daily basis. But there is a big surrender to our own physical bodies in what they're experiencing. Like, I did not ask for this. I mean, 
maybe unconsciously <laughs> there was a part of me that was um you didn't ask for this you know and so there's just a big surrender into being in the thick of it but i just trust like th there's no doubt in my mind and we're st still recovering um but you know my my body was definitely feeling something because yesterday when we finally had a moment of like feeling like our bodies could come together again and just touch in a yeah like we could lay we could lay down for the first time in a week we we got to lay down next to each other in the bed with my arm wrapped around you and just holding you and having us both feel present enough to enjoy it yeah and i immediately started sobbing and i have no idea what the tears were except that something to do with like the longing to feel that again because that is like our one of our things right like we're both just mm -hmm. deep touch people so i guess i have a question for you because you know we always talk about surrender for the submissive but you had to surrender deeply to what your body was experiencing so what's that like for you as a man as the dominant it's it's tough to let go of and it's tough to let go and just allow something like this without resisting it i told a friend of mine this week like i'm just angry about this and he said well you know if you you'll heal a lot faster if you just allow and relax I'm like i fucking know <laughs> <laughs> and we did a lot of that that's about all we could do yeah there there that was my answer like there's no energy for anything other than that but i'm still not happy about it but a part of the reason that this surrendering and just letting go and essentially for me what this week was was saying i cannot live up to the responsibilities that i've assumed to run our business to lead and take responsibility for you and our household and everything is just getting put down until i can pick it back up again and that's tough to do because of how important i feel that all of these things that i do are like they matter to me i know the the importance but also the meaning behind everything that i do my whole life is set up in a way that i'm spending my time every moment of every day to the fullest extent possible doing things that matter deeply to me and so surrendering and setting them down feels like i'm leaving things that matter undone and that's hard because i care and i still care even while i watch like you pick up the slack for me for example i have no problem picking up all of the slack for you i never think twice about it but the moment that you have to pick up the slack for me there is a real inner challenge and inner battle that goes on in me to allow it and not feel like i'm dropping the ball or failing somehow hmm. resistance to receiving
it definitely felt like that at times this week, although it's hard to say how much of that is influenced by the fact that I just feel like dog crap and, you know, no, nothing of either of our physical or emotional states was normal this week. So, but it's an interesting observation and something to, on the thread of things happen for us and not to us when we see these things. Like when I see something like that, because I picked up on that for myself. When I see these things, then it's up to me to look at them and determine, is there something there for me? Like, do I have a resistance to receiving? Or was that just the mind fuckery of this being sick for a week playing with my head? I've got to be willing to see. And the beautiful thing is, if there is something there, life will show you, right? You don't even have to know in the moment. You don't have to overanalyze it. No, and that's... That's anything with emotional growth and I'll just say willingness to see the truth. You don't have to try. People put way too much effort and emphasis on trying to figure it out. The truth just is. And if you're willing to see it, it'll show itself to you. And what I truly believe in my experience is that it's felt. Yeah. And our bodies don't argue with it. Not our bodies. Our minds is what minds want to argue. So This being dominant and submissive versus doing dominance and submission thing is really where inconsistency or consistency comes from. The, the question I have for you is how do you stay connected to the beingness of submission? Well, when you feel like you've just been like pushed down on the floor, I mean, and I didn't have a fight. I still don't have my <laughs> fight back. A little bit of sass is back. Yeah, the, the, the sassiness came back online last night. Oh, the night before last. Yeah. Um, but you know what? All I can really say is at the point where I'm at, I've already shared this. I believe that life happens for us. I believe that surrender is how I want to live. And so that's like all I could do this week. And frankly, the brain fog, for the most part, even kept me from going down any rabbit hole. <laughs> There's a lot of times where I just wanted to lay there with my eyes closed and that's all I could do. So I, I kind of feel like there was a little bit of forced surrender. Um, but where I'm at in life, I understand. Um, how do I want to say this? Just how to have an active role in keeping the mind there as well, I guess. What about in times when things are more quote unquote normal and 
going through regular life, how do you keep connected to the energy of this dynamic versus it kind of becoming an afterthought or just a part of the routine and forgotten about? You know, back to when you said the truth just is. When I, f I feel like I've come into harmony with my own soul. And my soul needs to experience the submission. It's just this inner feel. that is just pure and always there. I feel it whether I'm with you or not. Like when I'm apart from you, I, I desire your presence again. But I still feel it. And I remember you telling me that not that long ago, that that was possible. Um, but that was at a point where we were spending a lot of our time together. <laughs> so it's like, well, how do I, how do I feel that? Um, just in the little bit since we've, you know, been back here, if I've been apart from you at all, it's a connection that can't be broken. And that's what I also feel the word union describes when we've talked about that. I just feel it like deeply. So then my next question before I kind of share my side of that is what do I do in your opinion or your view of how I lead you? What do I do that helps to keep you connected to your submission? Hmm, I like that question never thought about that before. You're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> With less than full brain power <laughs> on the eve of a week of being sick, I'm sorry, on the, the heels of a week of being sick, I put you on the spot with an unexpected question. Isn't that kind of the name of the game? Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you, what do you do that helps me feel connected to it? It's not even about what you do, it's who you are. How so? Gosh, these are so hard to put into words because like I, I feel this in my body right now and it's just like expansive and it, it's just overtaking me just sitting here with it. This is what it does. Brings me to tears. Like, how do I even, how do I even grasp words to this feel? Um, it's, this feel feels so real and good to me. And I feel like what the words that come back to me is this God fuck me wide open that I said so like, I don't even know, know how long ago now. And it's because of your leadership and my surrender that I even get to touch that feel that feels so incredible. Um, and just humbling at the same time. So I'm not going to minimize what you do here because there are th things like in this human experience that don't go unnoticed. Um, but it, it's, it's all of your, your presence, your intention, intention and attention wrapped up into the presence of who and what you are to me and your ability to tune into that truth of my soul 
and it shows up in all of the ways from the way you look at me with attention and presence to the ways that you serve me and cooking me breakfast and the little things that you do again with that word intention throughout our day it's the the connection points that we get to experience it's the words that you bring to me it's the helping me focus on the truth of you and of me together and I feel that from you constantly. Thank you. Because that put into words and emotion very well what, how I would have tried to describe this, which is f for us to have now five and a half years of consistency in this dynamic. It has required of me that I pay attention to you all the time. The, even as you do the, the feminine thing of your attention flitting about and sometimes being very much on me and sometimes very much being off in your own little world or in all sorts of other different places. My attention has had to remain fixed on you. On caring for you, on leading you, on protecting you, on looking after you. And the reason we don't struggle with consistency first and foremost is because I don't let us. And absolutely love you to death. But if I had to rely on you to be the creator of or the holder of consistency in this dynamic, it wouldn't be here. No. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I like to have fun and fuck, <laughs> just that. <laughs> the, the problem that I think a lot of people have with consistency is they're pointing fingers at their partners, at each other as to the reasons why. And I will not have any finger pointing in this relationship. It's never, you did this, you did that. We, I won't let us approach anything from that perspective because it misses the whole entire point of being in, in union, in connection. And consistency is a masculine trait and therefore it is the responsibility of the dominant to lead in it. Surprise, surprise to any of our listeners or watchers, the, res the dominant is the one responsible for this relationship, for this dynamic, for leading it, for setting the structure, and for making it work. And this is too important to me to be anything less than consistent, which means I need to put my attention on it because priorities are not what you say they are your priorities are how you spend your time and and how you direct your attention well this goes back to something i think i said earlier is if your dynamic if the focus of your dynamic is in the just the rituals mm -hmm in the performing of the rituals or in the performing of tasks, the to-do list, you know, whatever. If, if the focus is there, 
that's not on two people. That's on a doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but I've had to work out of my own seeing myself, my identity and what I did. And so the last thing that I can receive from you is to be minimized to my doing, to my performance. Those are very um, contradictory, contradicting. I was going to say contradictory <laughs> and contradicting at the same time. Um, and so the, the, those are beautiful things, but it's the experience of those things. It's the experience that two people get to have of those things that make them real and life giving and connecting. And so, like, all of that is why, despite not even having much of a ritual this week of anything, besides the times we ate together, I guess we got that one, um, that's also why we don't fall out of this, at least for, in what I get to experience, because of how you've created all of this of who and what we are today it gets at another point we've talked about in the past but in this in this context it's important to bring it back up again if the things that you're doing aren't connected to a why mm -hmm. they're going to be a lot harder to follow through on when you get or to come back to when you get sick or when life gets busy or something unexpected happens on top of being sick twice in the last month. It's not like that's the only thing that we've had um, demanding our time. We traveled from Texas all the way back to Minnesota over two weeks with lots of stops and like there were just there was a lot that went into all of that travel. And our travel plans had to get changed on the fly a couple times. Yep. Because of some hiccups. You know, in, in the midst of all of that, we've been continuing to record these podcasts. I launched a new podcast called Conscious Dominance, if you haven't watched or listened to that yet, with my friend Eric. That happened in the last month. We've been continuing to run our business, take care of our, all of our clients, uh, in our coaching practice. And have our other emotional things to work through too, like coming back home and realizing how challenging it is to come back into our old environment where everyone knows us as we used to be as we continue to grow and evolve as people and, and recognizing that tension when we come back home has been its own emotional thing. So, you know, it hasn't just been being sick twice in a month. It's been a, a lot. You know what I think the problem is? I think Mercury was in retrograde. <laughs> I <laughs> did not expect you to go there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, that's funny because we know nothing about astrology <laughs> what whatsoever. But we saw a really funny video the other day where someone said, you need an astrology friend. <laughs> because then when you're having problems, you just go to them and ask them what planet to blame it on. That was a comedian, right? Yeah. And guess what? It's always Mercury. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. It sounds pretty fascinating to listen to people who actually know what they're talking about. Yeah. So it feels good to laugh. It really does. <laughs> and you know, interesting point in coming out of this second round of being sick, we sat down a couple nights ago and watched stand up comedy together for like two hours and laughed for the first time in a week and it was just like we both felt different 
Yeah, I knew we needed to experience that when we could. Yeah, after a lot of heavy, after a lot of heaviness in that week. But back to what I was saying before your hilariously funny <laughs> joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don has become the comedic relief now on Dom Sub Devotion. <laughs> we have to be, we have to remember or have a reason why we're doing these things that we're doing. Because then it's not about just what's on the list. What are your rules? What are the rituals? What are the tasks? The things everyone focuses on that a dominant needs to give a submissive. If it is just about those things, there's no reason for it. And if you have a reason, like if it matters to you, like I said, these things are important to me. This isn't just playing a game. Everything we do in this relationship is aimed at helping both of us be our highest selves. to be our best selves, to heal ourselves and experience life to the fullest extent of aliveness that we can. Sums up pretty well what it is that I'm doing here with my leadership of you. So when you have a why like that, and all of the tasks, all of the rules, all of the rituals, all of the stuff, the, the trappings of the day-to-day -day of the dom-sub dynamic are in service to something that is meaningful. Then you, what happens instead of falling out of it or losing touch with it when you have a month like we've had, you experience instead what you said towards the beginning, which is just longing to have it back. And then as soon as we can, it's like, we are all the way right there every time. Yeah. And I think it's valuable to kind of rewind us a little bit and just share that, you know, that there was a time where we would kind of feel the connection and we wouldn't right and i think you felt it more than i did because i was the one who was lost in the overthinking mm -hmm. and that truly was in my opinion the big differentiating factor is my ability to be present in my life experience in my body without overthinking even that one but really just its presence um, but when I would be lost in my own little world off worrying more about what I had to do, that's where my focus was, what I was trying to control, you would feel disconnected from me. And I remember like you would come back to me and you're like, I just, I need to feel connected. I need to feel connected. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and that was me imitating what I probably was because <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, what would really happen is you would act upset with me because you f felt somehow attacked. Exactly. And so you would like, yeah, that would kind of come up as a, because the story that I would listen to in my mind is, once again, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough. And so when I've been able to detach from those stories, the meaning making, the going to my mind, that is all the difference in the felt connection. Because again, as when we're both present in our bodies, you can't lose that connection. That's what my experience is now. So 
if you find yourself losing connection. What we would do is our coming together a lot of times was that laying together on the bed because we are touch and I believe that <laughs> I've never really thought about this before but how disconnected I was from my body but my love one my top love language was physical touch I feel like there's all sorts of stuff there but that's how we would feel the connection again and that doesn't go unnoticed for me in how the only way to truly feel that was coming together in our bodies. And so whatever that can be for you out there listening is, it, it really re requires the dropping out of the mind and being present with each other in whatever that is. For some people, maybe that's eye gazing, maybe that's touching, maybe that's, I don't know, just pleasure, but not just pleasure, but <laughs> essentially some version of pleasure. And so I share that because it is part of the process on how you seek to get there and how you truly can remain in this presence on a regular basis. Be intentional about coming back together and recreating it when it's not there. Yeah, we talk to couples fairly frequently about having a reconnection ritual, mm -hmm. something that you do when you've been apart, you come back together to get yourselves back, like just in deep connection with each other, back in intimacy with each other. When your energies have maybe been scattered with work or kids or travel or whatever it might be. Yeah. And you know, just like we've shared before with different clients and such, um, that in itself is a process because there was a point where I lived in a very disconnected with my own experience. So if I'm disconnected in my own body, I can't truly be connected to you either. And that's why, once again, we sit here and talk about the emotional aspect because if you truly want to touch what you can in this dynamic it requires the physical the emotional and the spiritual i feel like it's just this triangle that gets to maybe that's the triune god i don't know i've that just came to my mind because i've always wondered what that experience or, or what all of that was but that's what I have felt in this experience of connecting all of the different aspects, the touch points of life. Emotional is the important, the really important thing there, because, you know, this is something we, the, one of the comments we get from people is, when are you going to just get to the good stuff? When are you just going to talk about doming her? Like, when are you just going to talk about the ways that you tie her up and you know, what kind of bondage do you do? Like, come on, just get to the important, like to the things that I want to talk about. And we keep sitting here and talking about emotions. We, we keep sitting here and talking about connection and healing. Why? Because if you don't do that, then you're just playing a fucking game. You're missing everything this can be if you are not focusing on incorporating the emotional connection into the dominant submissive dynamic. Mm -hmm. And no shame in the game if the game is what you want to play. But what we're here to do is to talk to people who want this dynamic in a way that lasts for 30, 40, 50 years and keeps getting better over time. That like, that's who we talk to. That's who really listens to us. If you're somebody that just wants to hear how I, what I do to you in the bedroom, you aren't still listening 50 minutes into this podcast. Right. 
And there are also a million people out there that'll talk to, talk about and, and share on the bedroom side of this thing. But the reason we do this is because no one else out there talks about how to do this inside of a loving relationship and keep these dynamics really good, powerful, sexy over the long term. And that's like, that's what we're here to do. The last point on consistency that I want to make is about something that we've done really well, which is to incorporate our regular life into the dynamic. Because the way that we go about living our day to day lives, we couldn't forget about this if we wanted to. It's so built into how we live our lives. So it's not something we're trying to do in addition to our normal lives than have this other thing. It's interwoven with everything that we do all the time. And so for the last point here on consistency, if you have a dynamic and you want it to be, you want it to last and you want it to stay consistent, you want to stay connected to it, find ways to make the things you already do a part of your dynamic. You've done a really good job on that with us. I give you all that credit. You know, simple little things that look like romantic gestures that are really you being obedient, like opening doors. You will walk up to a door and stand there and wait for me to open it. Yes, I will. And perception aside, what anyone else sees there or thinks about that. It is a little moment that happens not every day, but consistently enough throughout our lives that it's just one little thing that reminds us of that. This is something that I'm in charge of and you are not. It reminds me because I have to like, I have to step forward in that because you're not going to. Right. Unless I'm not there or there's some other reason, you will stand there and wait for me to open the door. Yeah. And again, I want to bring back this word of like presence and intention and attention because that goes on both ways. Mm -hmm. Because I could just obey it because you said, or I can actively tune into everything that that means for us every time I stand there and wait mm -hmm. or every time I'm on my way to the door and you're opening it for me. Like I actively, this is one way my mind gets to serve me is I bring myself to the meaning of it. Every time I wait for you to eat, it's, it's not lost. And that also is that fuel of connection that just gets to be present there all the time and never forgotten. Yeah. So having those little things like that and great point be about intention and attention with those, because just going through the motions loses all of the, the point of it all. Yeah. And I can speak from experience that that used to be me. I would go in and out of even being connected to the point of the rituals because I would just be lost in my head or worried about something else. And when I have been able to set myself free from living in that energy, this is why it feels life giving to live in surrender submission. Yeah. And if you establish those kinds of rituals consistently that are 
utilizing the things that are already happening in your day as connection points to the dom sub dynamic and you become well practiced at having those not only happen consistently but also connecting to the point and purpose consistently then when you have a week or a month like we've had and some of the other things that we enjoy have been less present or possible we still have those little things that are still there even when we are just down and out yep exactly those those little things are still there and they're still always there that collar i cannot end this without talking about the way that i see that collar around your neck i feel it when i lay down behind you at night and wrap my arm around you and i feel it on you every single time that i see that collar it's a reminder to me that you are mine and that i'm responsible for you and that is maybe my favorite piece of consistency has been five and a half years of seeing that around your neck as a reminder to both of us so hopefully this conversation and some of the vulnerability of where we have been in the last week will be helpful for any of you who are watching or listening in this to be able to find a sense of consistency through some of the lessons that we've learned and some of the challenges we've been in the middle of frankly so thank you very much for listening and watching and we appreciate it please leave a review for us if you listen to this on apple or spotify and we would love to see your comments if you do watch us on youtube thank you for tuning in thanks so much